Gemini, welcome to your second reading for February. I hope this finds you well. I am bringing you a general reading for the collective of Gemini, Sun, and Rising. Best uh, course of action is just take what speaks to you, leave the rest. Um, if it doesn't resonate at all this time around, that's okay. If you are here as Gemini, Sun, you can always go check out the reading that aligns with your riding, rising sign to see if there are messages for you there or be a cross watcher and watch the sun and or rising readings for your divine counterpart. Sometimes that brings good information or at least you get their perspective, you know, what might be going on for them behind the scenes. Um, if you're here as a cross watcher, welcome. And of course, if you're new to the channel, just follow along. You'll, I'm sure you'll uh, get the hang of my style of readings. And if you enjoy it and you like it and you get something out of it, please join us by clicking subscribe and that little notification bell so that you can be notified of future readings when they are uploaded. Um, last little announcement is I did um, put a pause on the morning musings for those, for those of you who were enjoying them. Um, I apologize for that, but uh, I did kind of forewarn everybody that the metrics weren't looking good. The morning musings weren't gaining new audience members um, and therefore was bringing the channel down as a whole. That is a metric thing. It is not a personal thing. I love all of you who came to play and enjoyed the morning musings. They are coming back. They are coming back. I'm going to put them in the membership part of this channel. So I will keep you informed of that. So I just want to let you know you're not missing anything. I did stop them for this um, round, but they should be back in a week or two. Okay. Pulling two cards for you, Gemini, from... Um, the Enchanted Map, one for Divine Masculine, one for Divine Feminine. Masculine, Feminine. As always, remember, feel free to flip the energies around. So when I get through with this whole reading, if you like, I really resonate with the masculine side, but I'm the feminine, that's okay. Just reverse it. So Divine Masculine, this is the um, layout I set for myself and the intention that I set is for the Divine Masculine over here. Anywho, they get card 33. Now that's a master number, sacred number, we don't reduce it. And it says peaks of joy. I love that angel spirit um, literally leaping around in the clouds. It's beautiful, peaks of joy. And the feminine gets card four, spirit of place. Spirit of place. And we have this um, feminine image coming through there's a butterfly coming off of her eye and all the foliage um it's almost as if the face is in the in the side of the tree is part of the tree so i'm going to read this these to you spirit of place card number four and um card 33 so we'll start with 33 for the masculine, and these are just helpful so you can kind of know what oracle energy are, is coming through for each of you. And this was upright, and it says, your life is filled with happiness, so share it with others. Joy is yours today, no matter what your inquiry, you will be happy with the results. You're coming closer to a sense of achievement, and you've worked hard for it. You're surrounded by true companions and events that are synchronistically arranged to bring you to the next level of your life. That sounds really powerful. The world is singing a beautiful harmony. Life is exhilarating and hopeful. Let gratitude fill your heart and remember to share your happiness. Joy is contagious. Right off the bat, this feels like Gemini energy to me. So this may be a masculine Gemini I'm speaking about or two. Um, that just feels like that light, joy-filled energy just feels very Gemini to me. Here we go. Spirit of place, card four, authenticity is essence of power. Our ancient ancestors believed that every place has a spirit looking after it or embodying it. Just as we have a soul, plants, trees, birds, mountains, and rivers have their own essences. When the spirit of place arrives in your reading, it says that the answer to your query is in the overarching theme of your circumstances. Is your question about a struggle? The answer is to relax and let go of your need to control the situation. If your inquiry relates to finding love, then embody love rather than long for it. Once you find the essential truth that underlies your question and then name it, 
You'll discover the answer you've been seeking. Your greatest power is your authenticity. So dear feminine, that's basically suggesting that whatever you're here for, whatever energy you're looking for, whatever guidance you're looking for, um, if you can be very clear, like pinpoint it and name it, and then whatever is opposite of that, okay? So if you're looking for love, embody love. If you're um, looking for um, some kind of commitment coming toward you, be committed to yourself and all the other things that are important in your life. I'm just giving you a little bit of an idea of the flavor of that card. Really lovely cards for you. And it's important to note the number four, that is a four card. Four is about stability and structure and foundations and creating that foundation for yourself so you can grow. That's why I love that the face is kind of coming through the bark of the tree, right? Structure, rootedness, groundedness. Okay, Gemini, I'm pulling one special card. This is a new deck. So for those of you who have made donations to the channel, this is the way I use it. Um, I got this little, uh, it's inspirational insight cards. And uh, I also got another tarot deck, a clarifier deck um, that I'll be using today. So thank you for the donations. This is how I use them. I put them off to the side and then I go on a shopping spree for oracle decks and insight cards and tarot decks and other fun stuff for the channel. So thank you. Here we go, Jam. One card just for the Geminis watching. Oh my gosh, this came out yesterday. You saw me shuffle. I put it back randomly in the deck. So this came out for Taurus. It's good to do uncomfortable things. It's weight training for life. And that quote is by Annie Lamott. She's like a thought leader, philosophical kind of a person. It's good to do uncomfortable things. It's weight training for life can't believe the same card despite the shuffle and the random placement so that is an important message coming through for not just gemini but taurus as well wow note to self <laughs> it's good to do uncomfortable things that happens to be my um that was my entire 2020 it was actually my second half of 2019, most uncomfortable when I started the channel. This is, was totally out of my comfort zone. 2020 has been brutal for everybody. We've all been doing uncomfortable things. And 2021 hasn't seemed to, um, I mean, I feel like 2021 is a, is a, is a hangover. It's a 2020 hangover. I'm in a constant state of, is it Groundhog Day? Are we going through this same thing over and over and over again? Anyway. Here we go. <sighs> Masculine, showing up in the energy of the devil could be a Capricorn and feminine. Here's the 10 of cups. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right now. Hold, take a deep breath. So um, I'm still doing the little morning spreads because that's my program. That's you know what I do each day. Um, you know, to kind of tap into the energies for the sign I'm gonna read for. I'm just not recording them, but I have the photograph here. I'm looking at it now. I have it on my phone as well. It will be difficult for you to see. Um, let me turn it sideways and see if you can see if this will show. Um, I feel I'm getting too much reflection, but that right there is the devil card. And right on top of that is the Ten of Cups, and here it is. So I'm getting a pretty powerful message. Um, and there's something here in between these two in the morning reading was um, the High Priestess. So on some level, I want to say to those of you watching, you know exactly what this is about. High Priestess knows. I know, <laughs> right? High Priestess knows. So it could be um, the masculine energy coming through in the devil. First of all, it's Capricornian energy, and sometimes it's nothing else other than just that full-on, focused, steadfast, I've got my goal in front of me and nothing's going to get in my way, 
right? Think of the ram. We've got those ram. But the devil energy is usually um, at its highest and best energy. It is that, that unwavering focus and determination. And, um, but, you know, and some stubbornness around that but in its lower vibration can be very toxic, can really, you know, kind of repeat very toxic patterns. There can be obsession um, and lots of control issues around this. I'm not feeling all that just yet. I'm feeling the masculine showing up very focused and think about what they got here in this peaks of joy. You've worked hard, right? Time to kind of step into the light and enjoy it and then share that joy with the uh, with others so i'm feeling this is more about that sort of determined focused stubborn energy toward their goal and the feminine is over here like in the in the bliss of the moment <laughs> coming and channeling the energy of the coming into the reading channeling the energy of the ten of cups so i did want to share that with you I couldn't make heads or tails of it in the morning spread very much. Um, but the high priestess being between these two, let me believe when I did that reading that whoever you are watching already know what this is about. So it's, yeah, it's probably more clear to you than it is to me. I'm sorry if you hear a little buzzing around. We, it is lawn day. You guys tend to say you can't hear it much. It sounds like it's right in my ear. Um, but I just want to let you know if you're hearing it, you're not hallucinating it. Okay, so in the past for the masculine, the three of wands, ships coming in, some measure of manif... Okay, so manifesting that which they've worked so hard for. Feels to me like this devil energy is about they've had their blinders on. They've had to be really firm and focused and determined single-minded purpose and that now the ships are coming in and now we get this ace of wands so now there's an ignition of passion here and then the hierophant beautiful taurus energy of the hierophant your readings may be related gemini taurus and um if you're dealing with a gemini if you're dealing with a taurus or if you're here as a cross watcher etc but here's the beautiful energy of the hierophant is about being true to oneself and sort of, um, especially around the topic of commitment, this tends to be a card in relationship readings of conventional committed relationships. So there is some ignition of passion here, a divine gift of inspired passion, and then this very firm, serious, grounded, we have this strong earth energy for the masculine between the devil and the hierophant around commitment. So I feel like this masculine is seriously focused and very determined and possibly stubborn hey it happens it's like three million degrees here and i say that as i want to just say for those of you um in southern states in the u.s that are going through that brutal winter storm i am sending my love and sunshiny energy and you've all got me so worried so for the feminine, eight of pentacles in the past, there's some focused attention as well. But this is a different kind of focus than, than the devil energy. This is a little bit more about coming up with creative solutions to a problem. So there's like solitary focus on this is what needs fine tuning. This is what I need to work on. Everything else has been, you know, all the other pentacles are growing up the wall, but this one's got your full attention. Present experience right? Choosing the path. How beautiful is that? Look at this feminine. I love that for you. It's beautiful. The Ten of Cups and the Two of Wands. Two of Wands is about the world of possibilities is in the palm of your hand. Pat, two paths lie before you, dear feminine. And it's not that one is, you know, right or wrong. It's that one is better for you than the other. And so it becomes a matter of choice, what path you will choose and take. In the future, um, four of pentacles it is guarded but in this case it feels to me as if it may be it it feels more stubborn energy i'm almost seeing two people here that kind of um stand their own ground 
because the four of pentacles can be about you know protecting self-protection especially in the heart chakra it could be about boundaries it can be about feeling guarded like you can't trust a situation so you kind of pull back but it can also be, be being very stubborn and sort of not coming off your position so i'm i'm getting a little sense that the topic may be about commitment and that the feminine may have um in the, this is future facing may have the need to kind of say you know what wait a minute i know what i want i know what i want the path i'm choosing is leading to this happily ever after and so whatever your version of commitment is if it doesn't match the feminines, there may be a little bit of stubborn energy. This is also stubborn energy, the Hierophant. So you may both have your heels dug in going forward. Okay. Another new little deck. This is called Magic Seer. It is essentially the same as this deck here, but in like cartoon coloration, very similar to the modern witch deck so it's um basically the rider weight but in technicolor all right show me the devil energy please mm -hmm. yeah there's the emperor that is divine masculine energy. Um, I'm feeling super controlling. Um, underneath, I will take the six of wands. So there is something here that this masculine at some level, um, underneath, underneath um, in their psyche, they're aware that there's a need to move toward reconciliation. There's something here that needs reconciling. Reconciling differences, making peace over something, it's underneath, so it suggests that there's an awareness of it, at least um, subconsciously. But these two energies together, I'm feeling super controlling. Like, you know, we're gonna do things when I'm ready and not one moment sooner. There feels like there's a lot of control in both of these cards. Um, Capricorn and Aries, both very powerful energies. Um, Aries is ruled by Mars. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. And those are two very serious um, masculine dominant planets. And they don't play. Mm -mm -mm -mm. They don't play. My way or the highway. But underneath, there's some awareness that perhaps there's a need to reconcile the situation three of wands in the past wow manifesting a, the wish the dream come true right here in the past they got their wish here's for taking action slowly methodically deliberately right with the, with a plan they've planned for this the wish is coming true moving forward at their own pace wasn't that what i just said a moment ago we'll do it when i'm ready to do it um interesting and there's the high priestess so i am going to take it it's coming on the bottom of the deck all right so now i understand the high priestess a little bit better i'm feeling it's a representation perhaps of separation and no communication so um since it's underneath it's not it's not really as major a part of the reading as it was in the um morning musing i feel on some at some level this masculine was wanting to kind of reconcile is wanting to reconcile the differences that have kept the two of you separated um but they want to move at their own pace that's why the control is coming in right i'll move toward reconciliation when i'm darn good and ready when it feels right to me and here's the ace of wands Three of Cups. Ace of Wands, Three of Cups, and the Lovers. I feel really good about it. Um, I am going to take this tower. It's underneath. So being that it's underneath, I feel almost as if it's not really happening, but there's an, an unconscious awareness that 
that the situation may not be sustainable or something may go off the rails. So I don't think it's happening. I think it's an anticipated energy coming from the masculine right now. I see the Ace of Wands, the Three of Cups, and the Lover's card. Now, Three of Cups can be... That's weird. Three of Cups, I, I set that... Yeah. I think my phone just heard me say something. Three of Cups can be um, a third-party energy. That's always possible. Um, but it can also, you know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, is what Freud used to say. And sometimes the Three of Cups is just about what it is, celebratory, right? Lighthearted, cause for celebration. And here we've got the Ace of Wands and possibly a cause for celebration right now um, for this masculine with you know, maybe reunion with the twin. That's what this card is about. This is your card, Gemini. The lover's card is your card. So I'm almost feeling as if there may be some cause for celebration. I am saying that because I'm seeing the peaks of joy in the oracle. I'm seeing this wish granted for the masculine. This is something they've worked for, maybe to the point that they've been obsessed about. So I'm almost seeing part of their own life has been interfering in this connection part of their own goals their own um so if you're here as the masculine and i'm talking about you your own goals your own um what you've been focused on has kind of interfered to some degree but it's now that you're ready to move toward reconciliation and celebrate with your divine counterpart underneath to some degree you know trouble may be brewing if you're here as the feminine, I'm letting you know that on some level within their psyche, um, before the whole thing falls apart, this masculine is getting ready to take action and move toward the feminine. And then in the future, we do have the beautiful energy of the Hierophant. Now, the Hierophant is about being true to yourself, knowing yourself at your core, who you truly are, and all about you know what commitment means to you. Um, what are your beliefs about it? How were you raised or indoctrinated in school or church or temple to, to feel and, you know, what are your beliefs on all levels about commitment? And sometimes our beliefs shift and sometimes they don't. And what I'm seeing here is some very stuck, um, stubborn energy. Hierophant, Four of Cups, Six of Swords. Hmm. And there's that Ace again. Ace of Wands. So we know there's like a big passion boiling up in this masculine. That's okay. I get it. The Four of Cups, I feel, is almost as if a masculine comes forward to kind of clear the air with someone that has said talk to the hand right in the future this is in the future and i'm almost feeling that the four of pentacles and the four of cups are a similar energy right i'm not i'm not buying what you're selling um there's emotional distance here and as this masculine comes forward really wanting to clear the air and move to calmer waters that six of swords because there is a lot of passion and they want to celebrate it so I'm seeing the Three of Cups as celebratory for some of you. It may be different. I'm not seeing anything nefarious yet. It may come out in the extended. I don't know. But what I see the feminine showing up is like, yep, I'm ready for my happily ever after. That's the path they're choosing. Ten of Cups. This was in your morning spread twice, the Seven of Cups, but I'm confused. Mixed messages, now that makes sense. But there's the Eight of Pentacles, trying to focus on a creative solution to this problem. What's the problem? I'm emotionally confused and overwhelmed. I'm getting mixed messages. So that Seven of Cups could be some stuff, emotional, um, something on an emotional level that's impacted the feminine on an emotional level that hasn't been resolved yet and you're trying to focus on it and clear it up whatever it is it could be mixed messages um, that you're receiving from this masculine and there we go underneath is the judgment card the judgment card is about 
right? Second chances, forgiveness. It's that crossroads energy of do we do we reunite or do we go our separate ways? And I'm saying I'm seeing union reunion in the lovers card. I see it here. I see it in the hierophant. Um, and the two of wands could, you know, I'm definitely seeing it in the 10 of cups. So on some level, dear feminine, you are aware that there may be an opportunity for second chances for, um, to offer or be given forgiveness, whatever that means to you. Um, and to answer the call of this very powerful connection, but there's some confusion here right now. That seven of cups came out twice in the morning spread. And it left me feeling like, well, that's a mixed message. And that's why I'm seeing it that way now. Eight of Pentacles in the past. So that energy of the Eight of Pentacles is still carrying forward, Feminine. You're still trying to figure it out. Yes, did someone walk away from, like, is this over? Um, create a solution to a problem. Someone turn their back here. Eight of Cups is walking away. Um, Queen of Wands. Hmm. I feel there's a, been a problem in this, uh, some kind of problem emotionally here. Someone that's just signed, uh, basically said, yeah, I don't want the drama. I don't want the drama. And then we have the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is Aries Leo Sagittarius. So that may be important to some of you. But generally speaking, it's just somebody who's very clear about what they want. Boom, done. I'm walking away. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm not getting what I need. I'm not getting the clarity on an emotional level. I'm out. I know what I want. Eight of Cups. And now I'm choosing the path. The path that would give me the clarity and the, the Ten of Cups. So the Seven of Cups still being there and the Eight of Pentacles trying to sort through it and figure it out. Solve the riddle on an emotional level. Yes, Ten of Wands was in your morning spread as well. So choosing a, choosing a path that um, gives you the ability to kind of offload all the negative karma. This has been something that's been weighing on you for quite some time, dear feminine. And it's just like, ugh, I'm done with it all. So laying down a burden here involving the twin flame. But this is about choosing the path that allows you to kind of offload all that negative karma and not carry it on your shoulders anymore. So in the past, I feel like um, there was a walking away moment and now there is this, I've got to, I've got to choose a path and whatever the path that is, I have to be able to offload this negative karma with my twin. I'm getting mixed messages. I'm trying to sort through it underneath. Is there still hope that we could have a second chance? And then we have the four of pentacles going forward. Okay, so kind of holding back until things are more fair and balanced for Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, King of Cups, and someone comes clean with their emotional availability. Yep, makes sense to me. Haven't given up yet. <laughs> I feel like you may be, it could just be a Capricorn in the picture here, that devil coming. I haven't given up on this person. I feel it's more like a person and not just an energy. It could be somebody that is a Capricorn or has a lot of Capricorn in their chart, especially um, I'm going to say their moon or their rising. Moon or rising. And then right after that is this um, chariot. And the chariot's about moving forward and being victorious. So I feel to some degree, here's what's underneath for the feminine in the future. Yeah, this is a struggle. I'm, I'm kind of like over it. I just don't feel like I can go any further, but I haven't quite given up on this Capricornian energy, this devil energy, this person who's very tightly controlled, but I want to move forward. I want us to be victorious. So I haven't quite given up. That's why the um, devil card is coming through more as a person. 
meaning the divine masculine. But here the feminine is, in the future is saying, yeah, I'm not going anywhere unless and until things are, are equal between us, till, like I receive as good as I give. Um, that six of pentacles is about reciprocity, things being even, not just even Stephen, but equal in terms of um, um, the distribution of energies in the connection have been out of balance apparently. And I feel that coming mostly from this side because I feel this masculine had other goals, other things that they had to take care of that was driving them very driven, very focused. And now they're ready to celebrate all that, but on some level they know that the whole thing may come down. It's possible that they missed their opportunity for of cups. So, dear feminine, moving forward, um, I'm feeling like there is potential if this masculine is coming forward in high vibration love and emotional availability, there is potential that everything could be resolved because on some level you haven't really given up on this person, even though they're kind of stubborn and um, possibly even a bit controlling. So we have um, Cancerian air energy in the chariot, real strong Capricornian energy in the devil twice, Scorpio in the judgment card, and um, I already said Taurus, Aries in the tower, there's your card, Gemini, Aquarius in the star, Pisces in the high priestess, Aries in the emperor. So if this is speaking to you, Gemini, I am going to go to the extended and look at this a little more closely. So I will pull three cards and I'll look at what you need to focus on right now. What might be the block, the challenge, or the dynamic between the two of you around that issue? And then what can you do about it or expect to come of it? I'll check the message from this masculine to the feminine. What do they have to say? What do they want the feminine to know? And vice versa. And then one card for you, Gemini, from your higher self, spirit of the universe. That will come through as some sort of advice from your um, spiritual team. And then we'll look at where things might go down the road. What can you expect to unfold or to come on your path going forward with regard to this connection? A link to the extended is in the description box below the video. I'll be there in a second. Otherwise, take care, Gem, and I'll see you in a future reading. Bye.